the Obama administration has suggested over the weekend that it's willing to talk directly to North Korea. So is Washington moving again down the road of appeasement? Editorial page editor Paul Gigo is staying with me now. Um, Paul, two pieces of news out of the weekend. This kind of pseudo offer, tentative offer of direct talks, and also an offer maybe to cut back on our ballistic missile uh, deployments. Yeah. What do you make of these developments? Well, first of all, I, I don't much like them. I think the timing was bad. Uh, I don't think that it was a good idea. But I would say this on behalf of John Kerry's offer. They were contingent. In other words, they weren't simply, oh, we'll pull Let's back. Let's have talks now. Right. right. They were, if you show some goodwill, uh, and you, have, you show you're willing to turn to, uh, uh, to let, uh, talk about dismantling your nuclear program and show some evidence of that, then we can, then we can have some talks. And that's, that's um, uh, still not good because I think that the, the North Koreans are ultimately doing all this in order to get back to the bargaining table and get concessions, particularly financial concessions. It was interesting, too, to see Secretary Kerry in Beijing sharing high-level intelligence information about what we know about the North's program with China. It almost seemed as if he was uh, not necessarily deferring to China, but uh, in many ways it looked like we needed China's permission uh, to move forward. I mean, what do you make well, of that relationship? I mean, look, the, the, the administration, I mean, it, it's, it's reasonable to try to get China to help. They have sure. the most leverage over North Korea. There is a new government in Beijing. There's a new leadership. So now is not is, is a moment where you could and should, I think, ask the Chinese if they're beginning to rethink uh, their allegiance to their client state in North Korea. I've always thought that it's unlikely that they will actually break with North Korea because what they really fear, I think, more than more than they should, is a uni united uh, uh, Korean Peninsula under the the uh, 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 jurisdiction of the South, essentially the, the the German model. Right. They fear that because they assume it'll be allied with the West. I think it's a un I think it's an unreasonable fear. Why? Because the North is basically, I think, more th threatening to China's own interests and stability. Uh, because of its uh, uh, nuclear threats than is a unified peninsula. And South Korea is not about to uh, pose a military threat to, to, to China, where North Korea could, in fact, if it keeps up with this nuclear program, end up with an, a, a, a nuclearized South Korea, a nuclearized Japan, and a, and a bulked up U.S. presence in the Pacific. And that isn't what China wants. You know, if you were sitting in Tokyo and you saw Secretary Kerry's comments this contingent offer of bilateral talks between the North and the United States. You'd be As nervous. Prime Minister Abe, yeah, exactly. How does sure. that make you feel? I think you'd be nervous. And, I, and I, I, well, the other thing I didn't like about John Kerry's trip was that Japan was the final leg of it. If I were planning this, this kind of trip, you, you plan these things to go with your closest allies first. You know, you can argue, okay, we should have gone to South Korea first, but you go South, you go Japan before you go to Beijing. So you get a unified position, so you send a reassuring signal to, to Japan rather than one that makes them nervous. And they are nervous because, look, every time we go to J J China, what with us, in the past, what they've said is, um, let's open the six-party talks. Which have accomplished nothing. Which have accomplished nothing. Except given North Korea time. Right, and, uh, and some aid and help to prop up the regime. And China, again, looks like that's what it's doing. Uh, it's pushed the United States to do that, and I think Kerry was probably responding to that. Okay. Editorial page editor Paul Gigo, thanks for being with us. We've also got a terrific editorial today on the North and how we've underestimated their militarization.